My father was uh, a firefighter, came from a family of firefighters. My grandfather was a firefighter. Uh, his, his father was a firefighter, so it basically runs in my family. My brother's actually going to be a firefighter. So this, this runs in my family. I mean, my father loves his job. There's nothing more in the world, I mean, except for probably his family. He, he loved his job to death. He would not do anything other than that. He um, actually, the summer before 9-11, was, he was on medical leave. He had a hernia operation. So he was with us the whole summer. Thank God I got to spend the last summer with my father. You know, he was went on vacations, got the whole summer spent with him. And his first day back to work was September 11th. And um, they wanted to put him on light duty, meaning they wanted to keep him uh, in the firehouse, answering the phones. He refused. He said, I'm a fireman, not a secretary. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work, no matter what. And I could just imagine if my father wasn't there that day, I could imagine how he would feel that he didn't go with his brothers in, into, into those buildings. My father would be a very, very broken man. And, um, you know, ever since, I, I, ever since that day, I believed this story for, the official story for all about two minutes. And uh, I, I, I always have my questions, you know, my family had their questions. And uh, the government sent us the 9-11 the uh, commission, or I should say omissions, really. But um, they, they sent us that, and I read the whole thing, and as I'm reading the whole thing, I, it, was, it was just incredible, that, that the lies. So I, I joined this group, the 9-11 the Truth, and then uh, I went to the, the Truth Rally in Cooper, uh, Great Hall, Cooper Union, September 10th. I've been down to the Trade Center every year with my family. This year, I was with my other family, and it felt better than anything I've ever felt before. I mean, the truth to actually be out there and, and, and know that, that I'm fighting for something that's right and something that's, that's American, because that is the American way. My father was a true patriot. My father hung up the flag every day and took it down every night. My father was a true, true patriot. And I will follow in his footsteps. And I, I try so hard, I'm gonna try to the death of me to get him justice. My father knew, knew what he was doing. And um, on another note, actually the fire department, they took us down about maybe two months, three months after, after it happened. Um, and they let us listen to uh, the recordings of, of their, you know, their radio contact. And I actually heard my father's last words was calm, calm as, as we're talking right now. He was, he said, I'm trapped in an elevator. I'm gonna try to hack my way out. Um, I'll, you know, get back to you when, boom, I said, radio contact lost. And, you know, when I heard that, that was just, that made me so sick to my stomach. And it still makes me sick. And uh, I just wanted to say this, this guy outside actually just told me, uh, stop talking about five years ago. And I told him I will never stop talking about five years ago. Yeah. Even, even if it's 20 years from now, 30 years from now, I'm never going to start talking about it. Because, I, I, because as I said before, my father's a, my father was a patriot, I'm a patriot, and everybody in this room that believes in truth and wants to find justice is a patriot. Because this is America. We, it is of the people, for the people, and by the people. And that's the America that I know. And that's the America that I'm going to defend, no matter what. But, so, um, in conclusion, I'd just really like to say thank you for everybody coming out, and we are going to keep up this fight till the end, till the very end. Like um, my man said before, he said, they, they took it from the top to the bottom, we're going to take it from the bottom to the top. The footage you just saw was the last time I saw Dan Wallace. Dan Wallace died in his sleep a couple days later, Monday, January 29th. Dan, you were one of the best friends I ever had. I will never forget you as long as I'm alive. One day, brother, we shall meet in the sky. I miss you, man. What did you just saw was from Alex Jones' 2010 documentary, Truth Rising, the 9-11 Chronicles, where Luke Bukowski is portrayed as a leader of the 9-11 Truth Movement. 
you just heard Luke say that Dan died a couple days after that speech. Dan died two months after that speech. He gave it December 3rd of 2006, and he died in bed at the age of 23 on January 29th of 2007. He was found dead by his girlfriend of three years, Sabrina Rivera. I was renting a room in the upper level of Luke Lukowski's father's house at the time, and I saw Sabrina that night of that day sleeping over Luke's place. I saw her late that night, and I saw her first thing that morning, and they were a couple for at least two years after that happened. There was a lot of infighting going on in the New York 9-11 troop group at the time. Les Jameson was the original self-appointed leader of it. Les Jameson is a, a leader in this Urantia religion. I don't know much about it. People have said that he advocates for a one-world government. People have questioned Les Jameson about his role. But there's stuff all over the internet about him um, being not just a member, but a leader, a group leader doing all these big group outings all, all over the world. I found it. That was uh, shortly after Dan's death, but this whole infighting was going on around the whole time that Dan died. Before this happened, uh, Luke came up with the idea to form a youth group. He insisted on giving it a non-9-11 non name, um, and he was just very insistent on it before any of this happened. Came up with the name We Are Change, and under the guise of forming a new group, was able to form a splinter group with a website following. He was close with Alex Jones and Loose Change at the time. Obviously, he would have been in Truth Rising, and he was about to be interviewed for a Loose Change Final Cut. Anyways, I messaged Dan's brother and Dan's sister about it, finally, about a year ago. Dan's brother said that she stole from their mother, and he wouldn't put it past her to do something like that. And his sister said that she was cheating on him with Luke while Dan was still alive. 